Right gang, this is our very last video from here at La Eco Villa. Also we thought 24 hours after we recorded that video, we discovered that our flights, which had been rebooked by our airline, were actually booked for the 24th of February, not the 24th of January. We're on a mission to discover if there's a better way. So, we had a mad um, rush to figure out what to do. Um, oh my God, it was so stressful. I mean, we always knew it would be fine, because it always is, but however many times you tell yourself that, it's not gonna make that moment fine. So, uh, we were being kicked out of the place um, on midday on the Saturday, and by, well, by, 10 o'clock on the Saturday, two hours before we were leaving, we still were arming and arming about what to do. Um, yeah, we had no places coming up here in uh, La Eco Via, so we decided to go off grid and camp. At, well, we didn't camp, we weren't, no, we weren't we in a tent. Um, we weren't in a tent, we were in a hut. But um, just going to put Mummy's wine in the fridge. Yeah. That's yeah, we so did. we went to somewhere called the Takatel Collective, yeah. which is basically yeah, an off-grid eco village just up the hill from um, La Eco Via. And we stayed there for the weekend. We had an amazing time at the river. Um, we lived off-grid, which was, which was really cool. It was a great experience, actually. And this morning, Monday morning, we walked down from there with our bags um, and dropped the kids off to the school bus uh, they are going to Casa Sula uh, for the week and I am going to be making a film about the alternative education system that is Casa Sula um, at the bequest of Marcelo who is the founder of La Ica Villa. Um, so actually everything's worked out okay and we are now find ourselves at a casita with some friends here in La Ica Villa because the people that were meant to be in this house uh, cancelled last minute so the, really the, the world has a strange way of working out doesn't it but it's it's all kind of figured out um, and then today we've booked our flights again for the third time to go yeah. and leave this place so on Tuesday the 1st of February we are due to fly to LA and everyone needs to keep their fingers crossed that that can happen <laughs> um, and if we don't fly for whatever reason then we're gonna have to go somewhere else because I can't keep coming back here. We're, we're gonna be known as the boomerang couple. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we the big risk that we've got though is that we did actually have um, a night away from the kids, which is obviously quite rare um, these days. And we went to a full moon party a week and a bit ago. And it was super fun. We had loads of fun, didn't we? Uh, really weird, but good fun. Um, and the next day or the day after we had a message on the group saying basically everybody's gone down with covid and we were like what the actual and what and including one of our lovely friends here who was in our car feels awful um and i was like oh my god maybe that's a sign maybe we're going to get covid maybe that's why we're here for a week anyway fast forward a week we're still fine and lots of people around us have got it the kids are going to go to school so I'm sure they're going to get it so I am now thinking that we might all end up with Covid by the end of the week but fingers crossed we won't. No there's no, no point in worrying about that. I'm not but, worrying about um, it. But. Yeah it is, it is all around us as as it probably is everywhere at the minute. Oh yeah so it is. We just have to we just have to crack on and, and see where we end up. Um, but this week's video is long overdue, actually, so... Yeah, we're a week uh, behind. But yeah. that's my fault, because he was trying to edit, and I was like, no, you need to pack, you need yeah. to sort out somewhere for us to live. So, um, yeah, that's if you're worried about it, you can blame me, but I yeah. made the right decision anyway, so... Yeah, so sorry, <laughs> uh, YouTube followers, that this is a bit late. But um, this is actually a flashback to a tour video that I did with the founder of La Ecovia, Marcelo. Um, and it's a long tour, um, but for all those people that are really interested in this amazing eco-village that is 
La Icavia. Uh, it's well worth watching the whole thing. Really hope you enjoy. Marcelo, I'm excited about this tour, my friend. Where should we go first? So here is uh, one of uh, Icovia's common areas. Um, there is a lot of magic that usually happens here, a lot of communal get-togethers. In this uh, big rancho, we, there are a lot of gatherings, meetings, a conference that happen. Over here we have a parking area and in that carport we have 30 solar panels on top of the roof mm -hmm. and that feeds, a, we have it, all the panels here are connected to the grid so we don't need batteries and we use the grid as the battery bank. So pretty mm -hmm. much uh, it didn't make sense. In Costa Rica's energy, 97, 98% comes from renewable sources. So the impact that had to produce the batteries and so on, it didn't make sense to bring panels and all the components that are so pollutant. So we send during the day, we send electricity to the grid and at night we take. And at the end of the month, hopefully we have to pay nothing. Anyway. All this that you see here used to be a cow pasture. All the property used to be a cow farm. And from this cow, we started restoring the soil, planting uh, trees. And right now you, you see fruit, fruit trees and native trees everywhere. And here is an area where people love to practice yoga, meditation, movement. And were these structures, um some of the first structures to go up at La Ica Villa, the community structures? Yes. Yeah, the community structures were one of the first ones to be built before the houses of people were here. And we started, like even before people built their houses, we started having a lot of gatherings here and started to build, getting to know each other and build yeah. communities. On the weekends we would have picnics and get togethers constantly and getting to know our new neighbors. Yeah. The design of the pool it had a lot to do with, with my wife. Um, she loved to exercise and for her swimming was, walking and swimming was her everyday activities. And for her having a space where she could swim um, was that and part of that was creating a space that could be used for recreational exercise and having trying to keep between the budget. I had a very tight budget to make it happen, so. Mm -hmm. You've done an amazing job. <coughs> this one here is turmeric. This is how. Oh yeah, I see it. You can get. Wow. A bunch of turmeric. Oh, wow, can I take some? Sure. We love yours. the turmeric. And Marcelo, talk to me about, um, whilst we're here, and opposite this beautiful home behind you, the, the architecture, because every every house is different. So every. tell me about how the houses are designed and what the principles are behind the architecture here. So here, you know, it was, when I, I put together a group of architects to create the regulations and bylaws for construction. And they were meeting for weeks and weeks and weeks. And each of them had like, you know, a belief in certain materials are the best for construction. One was saying bamboo is the best. The other one was saying, no, bamboo is not good because like you are like, you have to replace it and maintenance, wood is the best. And the other one was, no, wood is not the best because you have to cut trees and give all the maintenance. The best thing is cement. So we focus more, more the bylaws in the impact that we have on the land. So we only allow 25% of each lot to be built. So the idea is 75% they will stay green areas. So when you see an aerial picture of Laikovia, you could see pretty much green everywhere. And you see little dots of houses and all like all around, you will see cow farms. That's how it used to be. And you see this oasis in the middle that is Laikovia of uh, trees and, and green areas and you can see a perfect balance between a construction, development and nature. And Wonderful. 
you could even see it next to the roads. So people walk on the on this on the roads, and then on the areas where would be the, the sidewalk, we planted hundreds and hundreds of fruit trees and edible plants. Amazing. So you get very lot of things that you can be walking in the morning. You do your morning walk and you grab your papaya, oranges, and many fruits that are along the way. Beautiful. That's Beautiful. That's the idea. So as, as far as the surface for the road, uh, we always look for surfaces that are permeable, that allow the water to go into the ground. Mm -hmm. And instead of normal uh, cement or asphalt roads that doesn't allow the water to penetrate. And what happens is, like in many cities, towns and everything, there are so much between the construction of the houses and the roads, the water cannot be absorbed by the soil anymore. And the creeks and rivers, they get overflow by the amount of water that before was absorbed by, mm -hmm. uh, by the trees and the, the soil, and suddenly you have big floods everywhere. So around the property there are 14 ponds. In these ponds we have like a fish, shrimp, freshwater clams growing as, as well as water plants. Right now this pond here needs some maintenance but it has multiple functions that all the rainwater come into these um, ponds and it makes the water to slow down the speed and collects any sediments that might happen and uh, that those uh, that sediment we reuse it as well in the gardens with the fertilizer for the free stream freshwater clams and it gets reused and as well it collects water that we could use during the dry season to water plants and storage big amount of water between all the ponds. And usually during the dry season in here we have rows of corn and beans. This is yucca. We have our, um, oregano and some fruit trees and some coffee in there and here you could see um, it's, it's here is where everybody brings their baskets that every uh, Saturday morning they get filled uh, between the workers and volunteers they get filled with whatever is in production at the moment all the fruits veggies herbs they get split between every basket and you get a very beautiful basket of food every single week in this area as well, we have a communal compost. You can bring all your organic uh, material and it turns into a beautiful black soil after a few uh, weeks. And that we reuse in all the gardens. In all the beds here, the vegetable beds, arugula, bok choy, lettuces, onions, chives. The, the food production here, was this always the plan to have in this area or has it evolved? No, the, this area was destined to be a nursery where the plants begin and then spread it out throughout the, the property. But this was assigned as the area, as a common area for food production. It's in the center. If you see the area, it's right in the heart of yeah. the property. Yeah. I love this plant. If you want to try it, you can eat it. Oh wow, that's amazing. I mean, if I looked at that, there'd be no way that I thought that you could eat this. But you can. Here you have some arugula, you, you can taste how. As well in this container, we have a lot of uh, cleaning products that we have in big, uh, big containers, big, big buckets, that, and we have a pump, and everybody can bring their container of laundry detergent or detergent for the dishes or uh, disinfectants and everything that is biodegradable, natural and we bring the same container over and over again to get refilled and we just paid for what we consume much cheaper 
than you would pay in any supermarket. Yeah. We give a margin of the the profit to the workers for the additional work and as a thank for all the things they do for us. And we pay much less as well than we would pay in any store and we are not producing garbage. And we have all kinds of houses that were built with different materials. As I shared before, different styles and as well different budgets. There are some people that build their houses with 20, 20 plus thousand dollars and some people that spend over million and a half or two million dollars. So we have quite a range. Yeah. And Marcelo, your, the, your house has got quite an interesting story because am I not right in saying that it's recycled cars? Was that? Yeah, exactly. I, all my, all my house uh, was brought, it's a, about a 400, 400 square meter house. It's about 4,000 square feet of house and it all came in one container and all the pieces of the house it was like a lego light mat lightweight material that one person can lift it and put it together with numbers and uh, instructions with the structural engineer from here and a structural engineer from canada and they it's all made with recycled cars they melt the cars and make these pieces of metal and then all the walls are made of recycled paper and uh, yeah it's it's a very lightweight and you can make any shape and design you like so you live in a lego house Marcelo. i live in a lego house <laughs> it got built super quickly it's lightweight very good for earthquakes very resistant for earthquakes and i'm pretty happy with it yeah i bet you are so all throughout the properties there are trails that you can walk, go on bicycle and enjoy the connection with nature and if you don't want to see anyone you take these trails, there are many trails all around the property that you can emerge in nature and have peace and quiet time hearing the sounds of river nature and you could see down there. Being outside and breathe fresh air and touching the ground and connecting with the surroundings is very grounding and powerful. This area here it's a playground right now. Um, a lot of kids come and play here and the older kids as well and sometimes the adults we come and play uh, basketball. Uh, soccer, uh, pick a ball and volleyball. So it's a, this is a, a multi-use court. Over here are the structures from our old uh, school. And before Casa Sula, we started with these two uh, classrooms that right now one of them, uh, they, they wanted to turn it into a library. So this one is the old school library and it's a kids um, project to have a lot of games and books for kids and adults as well. So anyone that you know will not want to have any more some books in their library, this is a share. You can donate it to, to this area and everybody can borrow it, bring it back. It's a self-service a container and it, it keeps uh, growing and evolving and in this area here we have a we have a oven that it's a bread pizza oven and as well works for dehydrate to dehydrate fruits and the gas that we use for this oven comes from the biodigester. We will see it in a moment. The biodigester, I will describe it when we get there. But here as well, in this area, there is um, to play some games. And when the kids are playing, the adults, sometimes we make smoothies and pizzas and come and hang out around these areas as well. It's all creating containers for the community to come together and 
uh, connect and get to know each other. Yeah. And in the new Icovia, Icovia San Mateo, there will be much, much more spaces for that to happen as the property is bigger and the budget as well is different. So it's uh, really exciting like, the amount of things you can do. So Marcelo, let, let me just pause there. So Icovia uh, San Mateo, what, what would the starting price of a plot of land be? So the starting price, I think, is from like a like it's a little lower than fifty thousand dollars, forty something thousand to four hundred and fifty thousand, depending on the size of the plot, the location, and the time on when you buy. But that that varies. Um, so, it, but you are not only buying a plot of land because you could say, oh, but I can find in San Mateo some land yeah. that is bigger or something. You're buying a lifestyle, you're buying a concept that not only you're buying this small piece of land, you're buying like 150 hectares that you will share with everybody else of area that we will restore and have trails through the forest and kilometers and kilometers of trails and bicycle trails and places for adventures and river access and lineal parks and common areas and common facilities and having all these amazing things of feeling like you live in the best eco resort in the world because you have a gym and places to walk, run, exercise, to get together, concerts, theater. There is a theater over there that is running already. We have Shakespeare plays and uh, Orson Welles and, and it's called Teatro de la Tierra. And there are so many things happening that it's like no need to go out. In here, for example, we, we have from local uh, suppliers, people that grow organic eggs, organic chickens, um, goat milk, there are many WhatsApp groups that we have all these vendors that they come and deliver to your doorstep. So you truly do not need to go anywhere if you don't want to. Like things come to you and as well reduce the amount of traffic, uh, gasoline and uh, enjoying more hammock time. Yeah, wonderful. And you said why it's so green and so light part of this beautiful rain that you usually during the rainy season the rainy season here goes from May until uh, mid mid November mid November beginning of December depending on the year but usually during the morning every morning du during the whole year you have sunny beautiful mornings then around midday it start getting cloudy and you might get a, some rain in the afternoon or at night but you get to enjoy most of the day, and even if it rains, it's so beautiful with uh, to be walking out, or the kids love to go out and play in the rain, in the mud, and yeah. it's really fun. Yeah. So in here, you see this tank. This is uh, all the, the part of the infrastructure in every home. We left a pipe that people connect all their outlets from the house, their toilets, showers, sinks they can all go into this tube and by gravity throughout the whole property comes here this is the lowest point of the on the land and this is the only place uh, the only part of the system that require maintenance so once um, every two three years we clean these screens then they are there and it screens out anything that shouldn't be go into there like if people throw plastic stuff diapers tampons, anything that shouldn't be in, in there, the screens uh, retain them and that's the only part that we clean every two, three years. Yeah. And then all the water comes comes into the system and this is the, as my kids used to call it when they were kids, it was like the poop house. <laughs> So down, down here, there are like giant plastic bags. 
uh, that are very thick and inside these bags all the material start decomposing and from the composition of the material with like the bacteria the same bacteria that comes in there is start eating and they start producing gas the gas gets storage in these zeppelins up here and all the material is in these huge bags so it goes like three three and a half meters down and it circulates through there and all the material like it it, it, it is a very a hot process inside so it kills any anything bad from in the process and then the water uh, has a last thing that pass through a sand and coral filter and the water com comes out totally clean and the material disintegrates and so it doesn't require any maintenance on, on and the, the water goes back out into the river the water goes into a giant pool that that one has a lot of stones and everything and then it starts filtrating into the soil and through the soil eventually comes out into the river but naturally through natural filtration during the rainy season and during the dry season we can reuse that water for irrigation or like a, of the yards and so on and Amazing. it has a lot of nutrients as well and so that gas that that gas that's produced is is used in the neighborhood that gas is used uh, for the, the oven at the moment and um, there are plans to have a um, compressor to refill the gas canisters yeah and be able to bring them to the house and use them there for fantastic the idea of living in an eco village is that you have to live like as a caveman or as a hippie or that the electricity has to be very little or something but you can produce as much electricity as you need from renewable sources and have a very good lifestyle much better than in any anywhere anywhere else and eating healthy delicious fruits and food that you can produce in your backyard and have an abundance and comfort you know here when they come here and everybody is like wow you guys have amazing therapists that they come and give you massage and <laughs> you have like this beautiful pool and the kids can run around free get, get in their bicycles and go to their friend's house since very early age and have all this freedom and that's exactly what we wanted we didn't want to live um, as cavemen or that's why it's very inclusive we have people here from their 20s I mean, from newborns to 80 something years old, we have yeah. all the range. And that's the, you know, that's the thing about regeneration and sustainability. The only way to get there, if you find ways through technology, through innovation, that people feel better on making the change. And it makes sense financially, it makes sense in every way if you make it in a way that yeah, okay you you can move into the nature but you cannot have internet you cannot have toilets you can have no water <laughs> yeah. and everybody were saying like yeah it's very beautiful but it's not for me everybody here have their own business and we have to contribute a monthly fee for the common maintenance and that gets paid as well by the size of the lot and usually the people that have bigger lots are the people that have more money and that they can pay more so mm. like the HOA fees the monthly fees here they run between $80 to $500 so there is a big difference for getting pretty much the, the same, same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that you pay but it's a uh, you know your lot is yours what you produce there is yours um, and nobody is forced to do anything else so we share communal spaces we share a lot of initiatives a lot of ideas that we share together but nobody is forced to do anything they don't want and nobody is feeling okay because uh, i have i have to maintain everybody else it means like 
you can give out whatever you want out of your heart, but nobody is going to come and say, because you have more or make more than this. And that's the difference between, like everybody have their kitchen, they can eat at their home. We, we often say, let's have a, a potluck. We all bring something to share and we share a meal, but it's not something that we you have to. And that's the difference between, I co for me, a commune, and a community yeah. and I feel we are a community we share certain things but not everything and you will find communes that they share many things even their wives <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I know that uh, Katie's not so keen on going to uh, one of those <laughs> <laughs> one of the things I'm really interested in as well Marcelo is so you know when I'm describing Lake Avila to um, friends back home the easiest quickest way to describe it for me is that it there's a, a mix between almost like a beautiful five-star country club that's got all these amazing facilities alongside your your home and what I'm really interested in exploring when we get back to the UK is a, a commercial model that makes life easier for the people within the community so by that I mean having these incredible shared facilities that are maintained and looked after by a commercial entity and po potentially having the ability for outsiders to come in and use those facilities at a cost. But that economy is feeding back into the community. What, what, what do you think of that idea? Because I know that that doesn't happen so here it, necessarily. It all, it all depends. You know, they are like, they are models. And if you go to these places of when I was telling you about kibbutz in Israel, yeah. that they have uh, some beautiful caves and they, they rent those for weddings or things that people can come from outside and use them. And, but all that money goes into all the community. Yeah. So it all depends. Many, many people, they prefer to not have strangers coming in all the time yeah. into the space. Yeah. And here in Nicobia, they come. Before COVID, we had a law that was minimum a week uh, rentals. And during COVID, we asked to be 30 days. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was uh, this thing as well of like, if you have all these kids that they come back from school and they are running around and in their bicycles and you want to know that you have certain knowledge of who's on the property, yeah. who's around. And having constant strangers kills a little bit the sense of community, the sense of, yeah. of belonging, of intimacy. And yeah. having, a, you know, it's kind of, a, if you have rooms in your house that you are constantly renting out, it's like you have no the same free, like the same freedom of going to breakfast in your underwear. Yeah, yeah. It's not the same level of comfort that you feel even in your own home. Yes. By having outside people, and one thing is having it sometimes, and another thing is having it constantly flowing. So yeah. That's a decision that each community have to make. Yeah. On how, what do they prefer, and how they feel comfortable because it's a model that can work really well, but sometimes if they all benefit, because sometimes when it doesn't work for sure, is when it's a business that only benefits someone. Let's say that someone inside of the community has a retreat center and they are, they are the only ones benefiting financially from this venture. Then all the neighbors will be complaining, Oh, we have no privacy. They are taking pictures of my house. Yeah. And I feel like I'm in a zoo. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They do not want that as a constant thing. But yeah. if it's something that they are all benefiting from it, it can work. But as well, you have to see what is important for the community. If yeah. it's the privacy and the security and knowing who's around all the time or having constant strangers showing up and using their facilities. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Wonderful. Well, 
I have 3% left on my battery. So I think we'll call it a day here. And given that that is our place of residence, it's kind of perfect. Yes. But um, Marcelo, an amazing tour of La Eco Villa. Thank you so much. Thank you and, um, for being here. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. Thank you so much. Take care. Good man. We'll see you around. Well, we'll see you on Friday at the party.